Hey Transformers fans, it's time for another Fortress Maximus upgrade video. And this one doesn't just get the thumbs up, it gets the thumb kiss up. Taking a look at DNA designs. Whew, there isn't much space on here thanks to this big guy. DK02 Fortress Maximus upgrade kit. And this is the must have. When Titans Return Fortress Maximus came out, I was a little underwhelmed, and it was mostly because of all of the stuff missing from him. DNA to the rescue. This one is not available anymore readily. Um, like the uh, Perfect Effect Blaster, you can find some still on eBay. I think the price is going up on them, though. Um, DNA does have an amazing new upgrade kit, though, coming out for this guy in the bottom corner there. The uh, giant titan earthrise scorponok they got a great kit coming out for him and i'll uh, link to that upgrade in the show notes here if you want to get that one just click on the link in the description but this one is just it it takes your fortress maximus so much closer to looking g1 uh, you get a pair of waste cannons can't believe this guy was missing his waste cannons it's part of the look it's it's almost like Optimus Prime's chest windshield, but now you can have his waist cannons. You can have some really awesome upgraded hands and some upgrade parts for Cerebros. Now these are gray and they're intended for the Takara release. So Cerebros was totally gray in the Takara Japanese release. And in the North American release, which is what I have, he had black parts. But I actually like how the gray parts look on this Fortress Maximus. So I'm going to be popping those on and like with the perfect effect box comes in a really nice clamshell holding everything sturdy and secure. Also comes with some really detailed instructions on how to install everything. Now I normally like to get really thorough with these upgrades, customizations. Um, that's not going to happen today. I'm not limber enough to get these off, put these back on and then get these off again and put these back on again. Um, it's not that diff, well, it is difficult, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a lot of patience, technique, and blunt force trauma to um, get these off. You slide them off and you slide these new ones on. And it's not just a difference of articulation. Here's the original hand, which the thumb only had the one point of articulation. I can't believe we're talking about articulation and hands, articulation points. That's how big Fortress Maximus is. But his original one had one, two, three, four, five points of articulation. Uh, six if you include that. Seven if you include the twist. And it had the little gap to hold uh, a gun he did not come with, but one that... Um, perfect effect came up with and a couple of other companies have other ones too but that's about it just slightly curved fingers you can't really make a good fist they just close up like that no uh, wrist gun like the original one had either so not only does this set include the uh, waist cannons it's also got the little wrist blasters that the original g1 fortress maximus came with and they just open up like that they're actually, the flap is uh, movable too. So if you want to have it come up like that, however you want to display it, or just peeking up out of there. And it's really, really cool. Another iconic piece of the original Fortress Maximus look, having wrist guns. This guy is always armed, kind of like Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime, always armed. Uh, so that's really nice that you can have those in there, but they, they close up and they tuck in and they don't affect the transformation. So that's a big part of the hand upgrade. And then the um, the articulation on the fingers is cyber bananas, yo. Um, the thumb goes in and out, up and down. It's an extra articulation point there in the thumb. The fingers on the original ones just went up and down. These not only go up and down, but they go in and out and all over. Look at this, up and down the other way. They bend ways fingers aren't supposed to bend. Like, what is that? Maybe in 
50 years, people will be able to do that, and that'll be like a new hand signal. And he's also got bends at like every knuckle you're supposed to have a bend at. Lots of range to them as well. They'll go right up against each other. Which means you can make an actual real proper, well, I guess you're not supposed to do that with your fist, you'll break your fingers, they say. But you can really compact them up like so. And then you can have so many options for where to put the thumb too. Sometimes you like to display it like this. Sometimes underneath to tuck it all out of the way. It looks so cool to be able to do a more proper fist like that. So when you're doing a pose of using the wrist blaster, you want a more compact, powerful looking fist. And that goes a long way. And since it has the same gap that the other original Hasbro hand had, you can take a blaster and just pop it in there. You don't even have to secure the fingers around it. This, this particular perfect effect blaster is so tight in there, it's not falling out. And as I showed in the, uh, the video for this blaster, you can just position the fingers around the gun and now your Fortress Maximus is um, fully armed with not just more articulation points, but more blast points. And if you want him to have the guns on top of his forearms like G1 Fortress Maximus had, these came with a Metroplex upgrade. I believe it was a DNA set as well. But I've just taken some extras I had from that kit and I plugged them right into there. They're not red, they're not anywhere near as big as the original ones were, but still trying to get um, to that G1 look. And uh, it's more guns and that's where the original one had guns. Um, the real impressive part of this kit is this right here, the waste cannons. I was wondering how they were going to do that because where do you, where would you connect it here? There isn't really anything that looks like you could sturdily plus sturdily. There's that word again, sturdily plugged in. Um, but instead of attaching to the front here, they've taken these two little holes that are on the bottom of the side of his waist and they've added plugs here. So you can just plug these into the side and they'll swing around to the front. And it's obvious which way it needs to go. There's only one way on each side. It's, that's the wrong one. And that's the right one there. And just line up the holes there. And plug them in. Like so. And then you just swing that over. It doesn't actually swing all the way back. That might have been cool if, you could, if it could um, swing all the way behind, kind of going parallel to his waist like it could on the original one. But that's the, that's the limit of the joint there, apparently. And pop that one in as well. Fits nice and snug. It actually takes a bit of effort to get it out of there. So it's in there. Uh, I like the uh, black paint applications on the barrels. Um, on the original one, it, the barrels were so huge, but they weren't hollowed out. So black stickers on those kind of help the look and um, definitely the black paint looks nice there, but we're not done yet. So those kind of look stubby. And if that was it, that would be so much better than um, nothing. Something is better than nothing sometimes but these will actually pull out they'll telescope out to give you some more um some more length on the cannons and that looks so much better now but it's options if you prefer the stubby look maybe that's more of a comic look to you then you can do that if you want the g1 look if you want this colossal monstrosity to just be overflowing with weaponry and you can do that too. So there were an extra pair of pieces that were included with these waste cannons. And this guy is starting to really lean forward. This, uh, this blaster is a balancing hazard. A couple of little clips were included as well that you can just um, pop in the back here 
and they're used to store uh, those waste cannons if you don't want to display them you can just take these clips and this gap right in here just feeds into uh, the inside of this ramp same thing on the other side so that the holes are on the inside and you can actually slide that up or down down wherever you want so that you can still attach that and then you can take one of the waste cannons off remember when I said they're on there pretty securely that's how securely on there they are you can just open this up collapse the cannon and you can attach the cannons to the clips inside there close that up slide those up to wherever they need to be um, these aren't attached very tightly not as tightly as they are to the side of the body but you just close that and then there's a little bit of range for these I guess they can even be like a defense cannon for in behind he's got cannons in the back of his head close those up or you could extend them so that it's taking up a little bit more space back there that looks cool too it's not the uh, original look of having the cannons along his inside waist but it looks cool looks cool with uh, cannons running up and down his back but I prefer to have them on the front as they were intended and then the final piece for this this is a complete bonus I would have been so happy with just that and the hands but they've included these um, extra feet for your cerebros which is supposed to give him I don't know more uh, more articulation more range uh, these are kind of floppy and when I had these on my cerebros once before it was really hard to stand him the transformers will return after these messages We now return to the Transformers. So to do this part, you are going to need a screwdriver and undo these two screws in Cerebros' leg. And when you get all those off, you can pry the legs apart. And I'm notorious for losing screws, so... Sometimes you can just uh, store things in things. So now next time I want to do the swap back, I won't have to remember where I left the screws. So the legs now, you got to figure out which one is which, which side is which. And to do that, this is his foot right here, the front of his foot, that's his heel, stabilizing heel. Turn that around. Um, this isn't held in with screws, it's held in with these pegs. So I hope you don't lose one, because when I first got this set, I was missing one of these. And I looked high and low, and about the fifth time I looked, I was able to find it um, underneath one of the flap corners in the box. It had come loose, and it was just rattling around in the box. You can just slide that on there, and you take this peg right here, and pop it in there secure and that's that's how it fits so now you've got one gray leg installed on your cerebros you open up the other one same thing take off that peg pop that on there you don't need them really i mean they're on there tight enough um but covers a hole at least I don't know so there's uh, Cerebros now with gray legs instead of the original black legs he came with um, this is all about the look of Fort Max um, personally I, I don't think this is a step up especially since you know how what a fan of unity color unity or tone unity I am and the black legs on Cerebros go with the black hands and the black waist and the black uh, parts on his chest so when you take this out he has 
Well, I guess he still has some unity. It's, you know, the grays are repeating, um, but it just doesn't seem to work as well. Plus the Sunbow Cerebros was all black, so it was kind of cool to have an almost completely black Cerebros. But the thing I really don't like here is the gap you get. It's just, it's such a gap. It makes those big robotic legs look not so sturdy. They look more like chicken legs. So that's, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that I'm not necessarily glowing about in terms of like what it does to your Cerebros. And, and another thing I have to mention is this is so loose right here. This isn't going to um, keep him from falling back at all. Like that's what it's supposed to do. That's how it's designed uh, to work. But these are both so loose that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tighten that up, open that up, and like look how loose that is moving around in there. Uh, I don't know why that's so loose, um, but that is something to expect when you uh, install these legs. He's not going to be able to stand as well as he could with the original nice and tight heel brace and and foot joint so now i'm going to transform him back into fortress maximus's head and he's back in head mode and i'm starting to remember now why i went back to the black legs on this guy looks nice from the from the front these are still loose as loose as they were when he was in um robot mode for cerebros but it's this back part that's really annoying um it's like it's it's not the same on both sides this feels like it should go up more that one feels like it should go up more if you do get it up all the way these flaps start to come apart so it's just it's not fitting properly uh, unfortunately luckily I'm always trying to look at the silver lining it's on the back of the head it's better that something doesn't fit properly on the back of the head than on the front of the head because the front of the head is is what we're more concerned about. Um, what I do absolutely love though is the all gray look. So now you can get the Takara look of uh, their Fortress Maximus, which was all gray instead of having the black parts. Um, I guess it was this way, the black parts to the head. Uh, without having to drop all the money on a Takara Fortress Maximus. So I do appreciate that. Um, it's definitely worth it for that. And I keep my Fort Max in, in this mode with the head, Cerebros in head mode. I don't display Cerebros on his own. I don't display this thing in base mode. So um, I do like the all gray look over the black parts look to it. All right, time to say the magic words. Head on! And the gray head looks fantastic. Love it. I know some folks are going to be wondering, where'd you get that visor? Red chrome tape on eBay. And you just measure it out and cut it out. But I really prefer the gray look, the all gray look. And looking at the back here, you can't even really notice the, um, the stuff on the, uh, the back that isn't lining properly. Plus he's, he's blocking the view to some of it as well. Yeah, that's an awesome upgrade kit. Upgrade your head. Upgrade the waist cannons. Upgrade the hands. Not just have more articulation, but more firepower as well. That's what I love about DNA designs. They really leave everything on the table. Is that the expression or they leave nothing on the table? Uh, whatever the expression is, that means they put every single possible thing into it that they could have crammed into it that's the expression we should use here really really awesome and there is one more upgrade set for this fortress maximus a very very important upgrade set that i didn't realize was important until i had this thing for a couple of years and that's the feet the feet are not good on this and i had been debating whether i should drop the coin on the foot upgrade that was the one i wasn't sure if it was going to be the best value but that one will be coming soon this one was definitely worth every penny 
and more in order to get these awesome little upgrades for this Fortress Maximus. And if you want to upgrade your viewing experience on this channel, consider joining my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash michaelmercy. It's the Patreon tribe. And thank you, Patreon tribe, everyone there who is supporting the channel, enjoying the Patreon exclusives, hanging out with the round tables and the watch parties. We had an awesome round table great Sunday morning chat talking about a wide range of subjects. Awesome to see your faces and hear your voices. So thanks to everyone who takes part in those. Feel free to join the discussion by leaving a maximum musing in the comment section and to join the tribe, blast subscribe. Nerd Mistake.